What's up film family? In this video, I wanna show you my five tips on how to get great results on your film camera. And these tips will work for any format. You can shoot medium format with 35 millimeter, or you can even shoot large formats or all film formats, even if you wanna throw another one in there. My first tip is use a tripod and use a mechanical shutter release. These are vital to getting good night photography photos. This is actually more important than the tripod because a lot of times I find myself in situations where I can set the camera on like a flat surface or on a car and then use this and still get a great long exposure. For example, and this is why I have the Mamiya C330 here, is I went out and I took a night shot on a tripod, but I didn't have the mechanical shutter release with me. I ended up focusing, getting my shot. I pressed and was holding. I had to do it for about a minute and it created a lot of shake. This mechanical shutter release would have got me a better result. And the tripod you obviously would use because it just gives you more options and the ability to move and then continuously stay stable. Tip number two is shoot color film and then overexpose the film. What I ended up shooting was Fujifilm Superior 800. I bought a four pack of this, bought it with the intention of wanting to shoot night photography. I thought I was gonna shoot it at box speed at the time that I bought it, but after learning about reciprocity, which is a hard word for me to say. Reciprocity. Whatever, reciprocity. After learning about that, I just thought that maybe I can make it simpler on myself versus having to find a chart or make a chart off of calculations and all this stuff uh, for different speeds and different time lengths. I just said, hey, let me just overexpose the whole roll, develop it normally, and then see how it comes out. I'm very happy with how they came out. They actually came out a lot better than I expected. And it saves me that whole bringing a chart, worrying about the time and all this stuff. So shoot color film and then overexpose it by one stop. So 800 film rated at 400 and then 400 rated at 200 and then 200 rated at 100. Overexpose on purpose, one stop more of light. I guess you can use your black and white film, but I heard that it doesn't, I guess, read the scene as great for night long exposures. So what you could do is shoot color film and throw a black and white filter I know some people are against editing your film, but if you still enjoy black and white, I thought that these photos did look great in black and white, so I was throwing some black and white filters on top of them, and they look great. They just tell a different story. They give a different feel, so I could see how some people would wanna do long exposures at night and then throw a black and white filter. For my third tip, I recommend using a light meter. The app that I use is just called Light Meter. It looks like that. I don't know if you can see it. 
it's great and this is what I was able to set the ISO to 400 and then shoot at whatever speeds it recommends which in the video you see like 30 seconds five seconds or if it had the settings that I had on the camera I would use it but for the most part 10 seconds and over this helped me get that and what I like about this is it's very simple you just whip it out and you point at where you want to get a reading of and I was actually reading a lot for the blacks and the grays I guess with this tip as well is recommend tapping around and reading the scene you can tap on the darkest point on the highest point of light and you can watch the meter go up and down and for the shutter speed just go and set an aperture that I want for so for landscapes it's kind of easy you go from f8 to f11 or f16 whatever you're into from that point when you move the aperture it'll recommend the best shutter speed and then from your own knowledge you can either add time or reduce time and get the shot with using the light meter or exposing by one stop you have a really high chance of getting the correct lighting Tip number four with overexposing by one stop and using the light meter, you get a good reading and you can shoot that. But my number four tip is bracket your photos. So that means shoot the photo how the light meter is recommending that and then either add time or subtract time depending on what you think. So if you think there's a lot of lighting and you're doing it for a long time, like let's say a minute, then reduce it by 10 seconds or add 10 seconds and so forth. You as a photographer will have to bracket your photo, which just means take the photo multiple times, underexposed or overexposed, and that way you kind of have yourself a backup of how the photo turns out. That way you don't have just one shot at it, two shots at it, three shots at it, four shots at it if you want. If you get the lighting correct, then what is left, subject and the quality of your framing. For my last tip, my fifth tip, scan your film at home. So I know it's not possible for a lot of people and you guys take your stuff to the lab, but I just recommend the reason of having control of the outcome. A lot of times labs will give their own weird filters or give their own contracts and they don't really know what your goal was for the night photography. And then also because of there's so much darkness or a lot of blacks, when they scan your photos, they do a, a crop of half of it or three fourths and there's stuff missing from what you shot. I'll show you some examples now of some film photos that they scanned for me and you can see that they didn't give me the full image. And that was just annoying to me, so I didn't wanna deal with that. And I just ended up having them develop it at the lab and then, and I scanned it here at home. You just have better control of the photo outcome, especially when you're working so hard doing all these steps to get a good photo and then the lab messes it up or gives it these weird colors that you didn't want or doesn't scan it correctly and then you have to ask them to rescan and then rescan and then rescan to get it correct which is what my experience was maybe your lab is better than mine just avoid that and last tip scan your photos at home so that wraps it up guys thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions concerns let me know smash that like button for me helps people see my videos or know what's up i've been posting a video every single monday i'm gonna keep that going hopefully you guys like my content you can give me some feedback hit that like button subscribe there's much 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 more coming i got medium format videos coming out soon i'm still on that journey to find the best point and shoot 35 millimeter. Any suggestions you guys may have, let me know. But for the most part, I just go out and shoot and I show you guys my experience. If there's any tips that I feel like I can give you guys along the way, then I will definitely do that like I am now. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe. And 
and, 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 as always, happy shooting.